All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to a tech session kickoff. Uh, this is kind of a way for us to test this GoToWebinar, make sure that it's going to work appropriately, um, that we can record it and get it uploaded to YouTube and all that. The idea is uh, starting next month, I believe, we're going to start doing a regular monthly tech session. Now, if you go to PowerShell.org, you will find a schedule of them all. Uh, it's under the events menu right on the site. And we're going to publish the schedule about 30 to 60 days out. We're going to try and line it up further than that. And if you subscribe to the tech letter, the newsletter, then you'll get uh, a more extended schedule. Uh, but we're going to try and keep it at least 30 to 60 days out on the site. We're kind of roughly aiming for the first Thursday of every month at approximately 11 a.m. Pacific time. That'll probably evolve over time. Uh, if we need to make an accommodation to a particular presenter and move it around, we'll do that if we need to. So this is just kind of a, a quick summit recap, uh, state of the org for PowerShell.org, some other details and stuff, a way for us to test, the, test the, the functionality of this thing. However, this is a great opportunity for you to ask questions. If you have questions about anything we're doing at PowerShell.org, I'd like to try and answer them. So use that Q&A panel. I do have a, a little Q&A time set aside at the end, but I'm perfectly willing to take those as we go. So if we're on a particular topic and you want to know a little bit more about it, that's the time to ask the question. So just as a, a recap, um, I don't know if everyone's aware of all the stuff that uh, PowerShell.org has been getting into these days, but we're doing quite a bit. We're kicking off these tech session webinars. Uh, those will hopefully be a monthly thing. We do have a tech letter. Uh, we've got editors who work on that to put out a, a great technical newsletter every single month. It's not just a, a news roundup, although there is some of that too. Uh, we are running the PowerShell Summit, both in North America and in Europe once a year, and we now have the ability to record all of those sessions. And that's something I'll be talking about in just a moment. Um, we have what I consider to be some of the friendliest Q&A forums on the web for Windows PowerShell. There's a tremendous number of people who are lending their knowledge and their expertise to, to try and help solve people's problems. Um, I mean, you see responses coming in super, super fast. So it's, it's really great. If you're one of the folks doing that, I massively appreciate it. If you haven't, you know what, take a second and, and drop in the forums. Uh, you can sign up for a notification list so that you'll get an email each time there's a new post. And even if someone else has answered, you could maybe go clarify their answer, expand on it, offer, offer another perspective or a, an alternative. All those things are good. Uh, we are obviously uh, still working with Hal and John on the Power Scripting podcast. We're able to help provide some financial support when a piece of equipment breaks down or something like that. Um, so we're very proud to be able to do that. Uh, something I'll be talking about in a little bit we are gonna be launching uh, for real the verified effective exams uh, this year. We did do a, a brief trial of those and we've been doing a lot of backend development to make those work. And I'll talk about what those look like. We've got about seven free eBooks online. So we're, we're trying to do a lot to document niche topics. Um, those are something that can be easily updated. They're in a, a OneDrive account now, so you can easily view those. And we're still trying to provide what support we can to local user groups. Uh, Teresa Wilson has been great in, in kind of amassing the resources to help people get started and, and find the right contacts. We're trying to encourage speakers to register with Inetta so that other user groups can find them and invite them to speak. So we're, we're trying to do as much as we can to make life a little easier on those, those local user groups because those are a huge part of the community. So let's talk about the tech sessions. Um, as I said, these are going to be scheduled monthly. These will appear in the events calendar on PowerShell.org. Um, there is also a tech sessions page that will list the next two or three upcoming ones. You will have to do advanced registration. Uh, that's part of the GoToWebinar platform. Understand that we're not using that for anything. Uh, a lot of, of companies, when they do that, use it for lead generation. Uh, we're just letting GoToWebinar send you the event reminders. We're not actually pulling that or adding you to a database or anything else. Um, one of the reasons we're letting them do it is so that you can understand their privacy policies. Uh, you don't have to worry about us having one. We're not actually keeping your email. Uh, we're allowed by them to have up to 250 people registered. And this is incorrect. Let's fix this right now. Up to 100 can attend live. And that's just the account we've signed up for. If we start to get to a point where that's not enough, we can bump the, the account size, change our plan to accommodate more people. Um, it's kind of a huge bump. It, it goes from being oh, uh, 99 bucks a month, so about $1,200 a year, up to about five or $5,000 a year for the next bump. So we're, we're starting small and we'll see where it goes. We're always gonna be posting the recordings to a new YouTube channel that I just set up today. Uh, in fact, I will, since I just did it moments ago, here's the URL. It's uh, youtube.com 
slash user slash PowerShell org. Uh, so that will be online and this will be one of the first ones that gets posted there. That's the same channel where we will be posting the summit recordings. Um, and that is now linked on the front page of PowerShell.org in the right hand column under a new section called connect. Uh, so you've got all the different ways that you can keep in touch with PowerShell.org. So some upcoming tech sessions. Uh, in June, I'll be doing a get to know DSC, kind of an overview. And in July, I'll be doing a best practices for script design. Kind of a, a little bit of a takeoff of the session I did at TechEd, but a little bit more technical. Um, we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on code. Steve Murawski has volunteered to do a writing and testing DSC resources in August. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you sign up for that one, you're going to want to make sure you show up a little early because, again, we can only fit 100, and I'm expecting that one to kind of push the limit on that. We'll see. Uh, September, I'm going to be doing one on building trend and analysis reports using PowerShell, SQL, and SQL Server reporting services. That should be fun. And we're actively seeking presenters and topics. You don't need to be an MVP. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to go for a full hour. You just need to be willing to share something that you've done or discovered. Don't be a leech. Don't let just a few people do all this. We want to give people an opportunity to share. If you've got an idea, email tech sessions at PowerShell.org. Um, Nick, Nicholas Getchell is going to be coming online as our coordinator for these. Uh, so as, as we kind of loop him in, he'll keep the calendar updated and you know what, in a perfect world, we do two of these a month. That would be awesome that we're getting so many people wanting to do these that we can do them more than once a month. That would be great. Um, but this is the community thing, guys. This is where everybody's got to pitch in and, and do something. Uh, PowerShell Summit, North America, 2014. Just finished that up a few weeks ago. It was a huge success. About 150 attendees, very positive feedback from everybody. One of the highlights for me, uh, Tuesday evening, the last slot of sessions, was lightning demos from a lot of the PowerShell team that doesn't normally present. So they just did little five and 10 minute demos. And then afterwards we had a little reception and nearly the entire freaking PowerShell team showed up to mingle with the crowd, talk to their customers and find out what we're doing with our products. And it was amazing. Uh, Jeffrey Snover did his first public demo of the Just Enough Administration Toolkit. It was kind of a, a beta test for him. He did the same session at TechEd. And he also demoed DSC running on Linux for the first, actually one of the other team members demoed that. Um, so, you know, in a lot of ways, th this was as, as close to the team as folks will come. This is the only type of place you're going to see that sort of content. And if you miss this, you are a sad, sad puppy. But you've got opportunities to, to show up. PowerShell Summit Europe 2014 will open for memberships in July of this year after our corporate fiscal year starts. Uh, it will be a three-day event with a single track in September in Amsterdam, and we can accommodate up to 60 people. It'll be a mix of U.S. and European speakers as well as PowerShell team members. Uh, Richard Sidaway has a blog post on PowerShell.org with the call for speakers, call for topics, and if you're interested in presenting, you should. Um, we're we're going to get the best mix of sessions and speakers we can, but we can only do what we we get submitted, so please do. Summit North America 2015 membership will open in fall of 2014, so this year. That'll be April 20 through 22 at Microsoft's campus in Charlotte, North Carolina. Maximum of about 150 people. Because of the ginormous PowerShell community in that region, so Atlanta and Charlotte and everything else, we are expecting a rapid sellout. So if you have a, a process that you need to go through to get budget, it'll be 800 bucks. You're going to have to start lining that up now so that when it actually becomes available, you can jump on it. Um, that will also be a mix of speakers and PowerShell team members. Uh, that'll probably be two tracks, not three, uh, due to space and uh, full three days. And we will be recording all of the sessions from both the European and the North American Summit. Um, that will be screen capture and audio recordings, not not live cameras pointed at people, probably. One room might have a camera. We're still sorting a couple things out there. But all those recordings will be posted absolutely free of charge to the new YouTube channel. Um, thanks very much for that. So a little bit about the Association for Windows PowerShell Professional. Uh, anyone who pays for the summit will become a member of the association. There are actually three membership levels. If you don't attend the summit, you can join for $300. That gets you access to the script peer review system that we're putting up. So um, a way for you to post a script and get people to provide feedback to it. That system will be open to the public at no charge. Um, it'll be based on kind of a point system so that the more you review other people's scripts, the more feedback you can get on your own. Um, professional association members will get sort of a, a, a priority access to that. 
So that also gets you a verified effective exam. The full level gets you everything, including one annual summit attendance. So that's the $800. If you want to attend both summits and get two exams, there's a global membership. We don't expect a lot of people to do that, but um, we know a couple people have asked about it. So we're, we're kind of planning for that. The May 2014 tech letter, which just went out this week, has some more details. And there's also a page on PowerShell.org, uh, which we're continuing to float details out as we, we kind of put everything together. I've been really swamped coming back from tech ed. Uh, and so I'm, I'm a little slower getting details up, but it's happening. Full and global memberships will be limited to the number of people we can accommodate at the summit. In other words, if you join as a full European member, we're only going to accept about 60 members because that's all that will fit at the summit. Attending the summit is a free benefit of, of being a member. It's part of your membership. Uh, so we're not going to let you join as that level of member unless we know we can hold you a seat at the summit. So this isn't going to be a question of you join and then you don't know if you're in or not. If you join, you're in. That's the deal. Essentially, you can think of this as you're going to the summit the same as you always did and you get all these other benefits stacked on. Now, why? Well, we started to find that running live events like a PowerShell summit often incurs a lot of tax situations, especially in Europe. Uh, you get into things like value added tax, you get into tax situations like creating, a, establishing a business nexus. And so we, we started looking at, at ways to not have to do that. And one of the things that a, a, an attorney recommended was creating a professional association. Because if someone joins an association where the summit is, is one of their benefits, you don't have those same tax snarls. And as we started looking at that, we thought, you know, Actually, even aside from that, an association is what we should probably be doing. It, it's education, it's peer review, it's examination and certification. A lot of the things that people have been asking for around PowerShell are what a professional association typically delivers. And so that's why we kind of structured this this way. Um, it's not going to cost you any more than it would normally cost to attend the summit, but you become part of something a, a lot bigger. Uh, the verified effective exams, these are going to go online in July or August. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is you'll be able to get in, you'll be able to read a guide about what will happen to you, and you'll click a button and say, I'm ready to take my test. You'll have a certain number of hours to complete your assignment. Your assignment will basically be a shell transcript. You're going to see someone running a tool, what the output is, what the errors are, everything else. You have to duplicate precisely that tool. You're going to upload your script and we're going to run it on the same system where that sample transcript was generated. Your transcript has to look exactly like the model transcript. That's the functional part of your grade. You will then be graded by a human panel for style. Yeah, make sure your formatting is appropriate and things like that. Um, it, I think it's initially set to be roughly a 30%, 70%, 30% style, 70% functionality, and you need 80% to pass. So you, you, can, you can have some flaws and still pass, there will be a full guide online. You'll be able to review it before you take the exam. Initially, we're only opening this to the alumni of the 2014 summit who have a voucher code for it. So it's the folks who registered early for that, just as a way of, of starting small and building up. Then it will be open to association members. And if you remember this associate level, uh, you can join and take the exam and get the peer review system access without going to a summit. So there is a way to, to pretty much just pay for the exam. Couple of questions that came up a lot about this. Um, will there be a way to upload my answer and test it to see if it passes? N no, um, your teachers in high school didn't let you upload a trial either. Um, it it's an exam. The purpose is to see if you can get it right, not to give you 50 tries at it. Uh, given 50 tries, my mom could figure it out. You get no feedback here. This is pass fail only. This is not intended to help you improve your skills. This is intended to help you verify whether or not you currently meet a skill standard. This is not a training tool. It's a verification. So just understand that's the way it is. Now, if, if you think you failed or you think you passed, but you really failed, well, that's pretty much you and everybody in any school ever. But you can challenge your score. Um, what we're going to do is require you to pay a deposit to do so. And that's intended to prevent people from just doing this every single time. A panel of three experts will then look at what happened. They'll look at your entry and they will either confirm your score, in which case you lose your deposit, or they will reverse your score, in which case you passed and you get your deposit back. You will still not get feedback. It will simply be their decision, pass or fail, confirmed or overturned. That's it. This is not a training tool. No one's going to explain to you what you did wrong. If you did something wrong, you're supposed to be good enough at this level to know that yourself. So that's how that's going to work. 
we're toying with the notion of a paid tier of eBooks. Um, these would be longer eBooks than, than the ones we currently offer. They would be more in-depth. They would still be updated more or less continuously. You would pay a yearly subscription. So we're thinking in the range of $5 to $20 a year, depending on how many books are offered. The authors would get a dollar or two per subscriber per year, which is about what authors make off of a print book, but this would give them an incentive to keep it updated. Um, because if a book is not being updated and it should be, we're going to yank it out of that library and then you wouldn't be paying for it. Uh, that fee will likely be included with association membership as well. So if you're any level of association membership, you would get those. And the idea here is personally, I don't know if you've, you've saw my blog post on donjones.com, but I'm just getting frustrated with traditional book publishing. It, it's too lengthy. You know, I write a book and it takes six months for it to go through editing and get published. And then it's out of date and I have to go through the whole cycle again. So I've been talking to some other authors and that's one of the reasons we're toying with this. There's nothing firm. We're probably going to ask for a lot of feedback from folks, um, but it, it's something that I'm, I'm thinking of. Ah, Dream, excellent question. Getting back to the exam. Um, here we go. Is this something that should be taken yearly? Yes. Presently, I, I forget what I wrote down, but presently, uh, your, when you complete the exam, when you complete the verified effective exam, you're going to be able to get a digital certificate that you can print yourself. That'll have a certificate number and anyone will be able to go into a website, punch in that number and verify that, that you do in fact have a certificate that you did pass the test. That certificate will have an expiration date. I want to say it's 24 months. So this is something you're going to want to take at least every couple of years. We're planning on offering, so this initial exam is just for PowerShell tool making. We're planning on offering other ones. Uh, DSC seems like an obvious one that we would offer. So, you know, if you're joining the association year after year after year, then you would have an exam every year. So you could, you know, potentially alternate. If it ever blows up to the point where there's five or six things on, and you want to know, hey, can I retake an exam if I fail? What's that cost? Or can I take more than one exam a year? We're, we'll figure that out. We know those are questions. And, and yeah, obviously, we'll be able to do all those things. Just the, the setting up of the infrastructure to accept payment and all that is, is one of the things that's making us take this slowly. Um, so that, that'll all happen. Uh, it, it, it'll happen probably pretty quick, but we want to ease our way into it. Anyway, yes, you will want to be retaking this every, every year or so. Uh, okay. Quick state of the org. Um, most of you know that we had an Indiegogo fundraising campaign. We raised over $10,000 for summit recording equipment. Um, that is being purchased. I have a huge stack of boxes in my garage and there's more on the way. And we're starting to, to put all that together and test it and get a shipping case for it so we can take it with us to Europe. Um, the annual organizational budget will be posted on powershell.org soon. Uh, it is roughly $18,000. That will be funded primarily through a portion of your association membership fees. So your association fee goes to do things like run the summit, obviously, but it also goes to do things like pay for our Azure hosting, pay for our newsletter hosting, pay for go to webinar that we're using right now. These things have a fee associated with them. And so that's how we're budgeting all that. That should help reduce our dependencies on corporate sponsors. Not that we don't love our sponsors, we do, but corporate priorities change over time. And we don't want to be left in a lurch just because we hit the econ apocalypse and nobody wants to spend money on marketing. Um, so we're currently stable financially. We are currently self-funded. Um, we are not currently relying on sponsor contributions, but we will continue to offer advertising to interested sponsors, but we should be less dependent on it. We do have our shareholder meeting coming up. If you're a shareholder, you've already received the invite for that. If you're a shareholder and you didn't, you should contact me directly. Uh, we will elect our new board of directors and uh, present our budget and everything else. So all that information should, should start floating out and you'll see posts on powershell.org with the outcome of all that. There is so much going on. Uh, there's so much going on with powershell.org. There's so much going on with the PowerShell community. You know, we've got, we've got a, a preview of version five. Um, you're gonna have a tough time keeping up. There's just so much happening. There's DSC running on Linux. We've got version five out there. We've got this just enough administration toolkit. We've got DSC resources coming out of our ears. We want to help you keep up, but you're going to have to at least connect with us. Um, on PowerShell.org's front page, in the right column, there's a bunch of social links. Twitter is probably one of the best and easiest because every time we put a post on PowerShell.org, it results in a post on the PSH org Twitter account. Use whatever you like, though. If you're not checking in, we've got no other way to keep you informed. 
Um, at the very least, the monthly tech letter lets us send you a monthly email with the latest happenings in the community. Um, if you've subscribed for that, but you're not getting it, it's because it's being eaten by your spam filters. And sometimes that can be a higher level spam filter than you might have access to, like Forefront Online Protection or whatever we're calling that now. You need to look at that. Uh, if you're concerned, post in the website assistance forum on PowerShell.org, send me an email. We'll try and get it sorted out for you. Also, make sure you're reading other what I call tier one resources like PowerShellMagazine.com. Um, the PowerShell team blog. These are the resources that are updated regularly and they're the best way for you to get a handle on what's new and what's happening in our world. The, the pace of this is picking up. Things are accelerating. You're going to find yourself way behind way quick if you're not on top of it. We view it, everybody at PowerShell.org views it as, as our job to help you keep up somehow. Um, we, we just got to have a way to talk to you and we're, we're talking through as many mouths as we can and we're trying to make sure it's the same message going to every mouth so that wherever you're looking, you're hopefully getting information. So I wanted to keep this quick um, so that it won't take too long to convert so I can upload it to YouTube and see if that part of this works. Uh, this was supposed to kind of be a test. We're likely gonna use this same venue for other kind of state of the org Q&A sessions from time to time in addition to technical tech session webinars. Um, our subscription with GoToWebinar lets us use it as much as we want to with up to 100 live people right now. So we'll, we'll try and do that. Um, you know, if, if folks are asking a lot of the same question, we might schedule one of these and just get it out of the way. If you've got any other questions though, this is the right time to ask them. Um, you know, again, uh, tech sessions coming up, the tech letters out there, we've got summits coming up, we've got the Q and A forums, we've got free eBooks. There's a ton of resources going on. There's the podcast. There's a lot of different ways for you to, to, to learn and to connect. And everyone's been telling us that the more connected they get to the community, the more they learn, the more effective they are. We had so many people walk up to us at the summit and, and even at tech ed and, and just be so gracious and, and saying, thank you for, for doing what you're doing to everybody, not just myself. Um, it's because, you know, I got a better job out of it. I got a promotion. I'm, I'm doing PowerShell almost full time now. And those are fantastic stories to hear. Uh, we'd like to help everybody do that. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up the tech tech session schedule. will be going live today. Again, we'll publish that 30 to 60 days out. We will tweet them via at PSH org. The YouTube channel will be going live this week, hopefully today. Um, the links are already on PowerShell.org. Check the events menu on PowerShell.org for the tech session information and the YouTube URL. And please consider submitting a session idea to tech sessions at PowerShell.org. The only way these things are going to go on is if everybody chips in to, to have them happen. Um, if it's going to have to be me doing them every time with, with somebody else chipping in occasionally, it's going to be really subject to my schedule. And that's, <laughs> that's not a good thing. So let's get everybody doing this. Let's let's make this a big effort for everybody. Uh, if you know someone in the community that you wish would do a session on some little topic, I don't care if it's 25 minutes long, let us know. I'll get Nicholas to hit him up and we'll track him down and try and get him to do something. So I'm not seeing any more questions in the queue, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, connect, engage, let us know what we can do to help. Uh, please offer your help to other people and let's keep this community thing rolling right along. Thanks a lot for being here.